This remote site in eastern Idaho could soon be the birthplace of a new nuclear age. The reprocessing and refabrication of highly radioactive fuel. The Idaho National Lab is a research facility where, in the 1970s and 80s, the U.S. government experimented with a safer kind of nuclear reactor. The federal government put their early research reactors out here because it's full of underground water and, frankly, there's no one out here. Decades after the plant stopped running, a Silicon Valley-backed company wants to build a new version, a 15-megawatt reactor called Aurora. We'll be installing a fuel fabrication line in here and making fuel for our, for our plant. The reactor will use liquid metal as coolant and leftover nuclear waste from the government as fuel. So this is the place where they will recover the fuel that you need. Yeah, and then we'll fabricate it. The company's CEO has been working in nuclear since he was 16 and envisions his reactor powering a town or a factory. For most of my life, there's not been a question about the demand for what nuclear energy is, which is reliable, clean, affordable. I mean, those are all attributes people want. And big tech wants it, too. Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, and a host of VC firms have invested in several nuclear companies. There's a, a long history of humans and machines working together. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman is chairman of Oklo's board and speaks openly about requiring huge amounts of power for the data centers that make AI possible. This is like a desperate need for as much energy as we can manufacture. But this is not an unregulated technology like AI. This is nuclear, where the waste from even new reactor designs like Oklo's will remain dangerously radioactive for centuries. In 2022, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission told Oklo they had not provided enough safety information. DeWitt says the company is working to satisfy regulators. You've got new physics, you have to use new models, you have to do all sorts of stuff that's different than what they're used to. A lot of things that they're used to don't apply, but they have to do their independent job of ensuring this meets adequate safety requirements. In nearby Idaho Falls, folks seem pretty comfortable with the idea. I think it's great. We've had it before. Right. So at this point, you'd say you're pretty comfortable with nuclear power. Oh, yeah. 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 A growing number of Americans feel the same. But critics argue that nuclear solves a problem for tech CEOs, not for humanity. If you were to integrate large language models, GPT-style models into search engines, it's going to cost, you know, five times as much environmentally as standard search. I want to see innovation in this country. I just want the scope of innovation to be determined beyond, you know, the incentive structures of this these giant companies. Couldn't we just cut back on our energy consumption? Why do we need more to feed our society more and more and more power? Yeah, I'm going to answer that in two ways. We've almost always seen a direct correlation between energy abundance, in other words, high energy footprints, and pretty much all, all aspects of quality of life. Not to mention, we're also trying to decarbonize. We are still so far away from electrifying vehicles, mm -hmm. and the amount of energy we're going to need to do that is huge. Now, Hallie, on the one hand, the question here is just logistical, right? I mean, if we're going to electrify everything from cars to kitchen ranges, we're going to need vastly more power than we can currently produce. But this also raises a philosophical question, right? I mean, whose interests are we serving by going to nuclear? Are we just serving the interests of companies that want to build AI products and EVs and figure out ways to power them? Or are we actually serving humanity's interests? I mean, are we, are we trying to live with more power or should we be trying to live with less? Hallie? It's these difficult uh, and really intense questions. Our thanks to our, our good friend Jake Ward for all of that amazing reporting. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.